Shalom and welcome to Jewish Life, the show about people and issues in Judaism and some secrets you missed out in Hebrew school. And I know one of those secrets. You think it's called spring cleaning. I got news for you. It's all about Passover. That's where they all got the idea. Everybody started getting ready for Passover and they would clean their homes and everybody would see in the olden days, they would take the pillows and the blankets and hang them up to air out. And they would wash away those earthy floors and they would scrub the walls. And all the neighbors picked up. They liked the idea. How about it? My neighbor is getting ready for Passover and I'm going to do spring cleaning. What is Passover cleaning? I am pleased to have with me Rabbi Shaltiel Lubavitch from a national organization called Go Kosher. Go Kosher, 1-800-1888. Go Kosher. If you want to go kosher, you want Rabbi Lubavitch. Rabbi Lubavitch, thank you for coming. I know this is a busy time for you. Nevertheless, we are here to educate the public a little bit about the cleaning for peso, and I'm glad you're here to help. What are we cleaning? Well, uh, when it comes to Passover, when it comes to Pesach, we have to rid the, we have to get rid of any uh, leavened substance which may be found anywhere within the kitchen. Well, first of course, we start with the products, with the, you know, the... the, the we got to ser- distinguish. It's not spring cleaning now. No. It's Passover cleaning. Right, right, okay. right. What, we're, what we are primarily concerned with is these food products, these wheat food products, which can find themselves mainly in the kitchen. So we get rid of all the, of course, as a, as a, as a, a takeoff of that, most of the Jewish balabusters already get to get, get more in, and they, they take care of all the cleaning. But uh, our obligation is to get rid of... In other words, um, you mean plain old dust? Dust, it, grunt. It's not considered chametz, huh? But we still want to have a clean house. Not by the strict letter of the law, but in the spirit of the law it is. Okay. And uh, so we have to rid, rid our, 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 our domain of leaven products such as cereals, uh, oats, bread, and all such products. And then we take it to another level. Uh, we're obligated by the Torah, actually, anything that we can reach, anything of substance that we can see or feel, we have to destroy. And that is the first step in cleaning for Passover. Then comes koshering. The next step is koshering, and that is that we are also obligated to, if there are utensils which have embedded within in them the taste of chametz, if they were used, let's say, with heat and moisture, so then there was absorption of the taste of chametz, these items, if we want to use them for Passover or uh, appliances, have also, also have to undergo a kosherizing process. Okay, let's start. Um, we're going to walk into the kitchen, and uh, my house is kosher, everything is fine. I want to make it Passover kosher. Um, where do I start? Okay. First, I emptied out, like you said, I emptied out all the cabinets. There are no more crumbs, no more bread, no more cookies, mm-hmm. no more cakes, none of that. Out. Right. One thing I must mention uh, is that everyone should remember to sell their chametz to a rabbi through through a rabbi. That is Thanks for reminding us. Why don't you uh, tell we us? We should about remember it? to sell chametz. And it uh, has to be by a rabbi who knows how to do it properly, so you don't own any chametz. What are we selling? In other words, you may keep some chametz in a designated area, mm-hmm. and you sell the actual food, even though it's in your house, but you sell it to a non-Jew who is allowed to own it. Own it. It belongs to him for a week, and you buy it back after Passover. So this is something which is extremely important. I appreciate that Rabbi Lubavitch reminded us of it. You can probably go to every Chabad website, uh, www.chabad.org, <coughs> and you can get a sale of chametz form. Now, we took care of the selling of the chametz. We emptied out the food. We uh, washed out the, uh, we vacuumed, whatever. No more crumbs. Next. Okay. Uh, now, probably uh, what, what most concerned us would be the the oven. If someone wants to use the oven for Pesach, uh, this is the procedure. You have to spray it with Easy Off, or so. If someone, if, if that is too caustic for some people, you could use soap and water. But the interior of the oven has to be clean, and so do the racks have to be clean. There cannot be any spillage or any grease film 
on the walls. So take all, any, whether it is chemical. Better chemical, better, ke better if it is chemical. And easy off is best because it really or, or something of that. Away. Yeah, something of that nature. And then 24 hours should elapse. And then one may, once the oven is perfectly clean, and even with, you know, even with a toothpick. 24 hours elapse from when after you used... cleaned it. After you've cleaned it. Okay. Then 24 hours should elapse, non-use, and then you should put it on the highest temperature for at least an hour and a half. You're talking now about the baking oven. Yes, the baking oven. Okay. And this would, this is a sufficient to kosher your oven for Pesach. What uh, will it do? What will this process do? Basically, um, after we've cleaned it and 24 hours has elapsed, we can safely assume that any taste embedded within the walls of the oven has gone totally flat, and then we are ready to subject it to the koshering procedure. Basically, the basic principle in koshering, it's not really a mystical procedure, it's a technical procedure, and that is that we, if, if a material, a given material, will absorb and also expunge, uh, and it did so under a certain uh, certain uh, certain temperatures. So we subjected to the same amount of temperature for the same amount of time, basically that it was used. So we assume, for example, when we bake the cake, a taste of the cake has been absorbed by the walls of the oven. Right. And when I go through this process, I am expunging the oven mm -hmm. from that taste. Correct. And especially the racks, because the, the racks are. Are the are, are an object which your which your your utensil are going to touch, and we don't want to, things to be reabsorbed into our pesach thicker utensils. So everything has to be uh, an, a clean slate, and in this way there won't be any cross. And washing enough is not good because this was an oven, and 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 it absorbed under high t high heat. And in order to expunge it, the law is kibolo kach polto. In the same way that it absorbed. So with that, that level of heat, we have to subject it to the same amount of heat and time duration in order for it to, to safely assume that it has expunged that which it has absorbed. Okay. That is as far as the oven goes. Okay. Uh, and then the it, same thing I would say probably applies to any utensil that is used in an oven. That is Let's correct. Let's say uh, a rotisserie, what is it called, uh, that you bake <laughs> the, only, the only thing is I wouldn't really... Um, I wouldn't really highly recommend kosherizing such utensils for Passover because they may not. Uh... Uh, because they're because you have to first clean it really properly, and then sometimes there's a lip on the outside of the utensil. Grime gets in there, and unless uh... you really burn that out with a torch, you cannot safely assume that you have expunged every iota of chametz or chametz taste. Okay, so here we entered in another point, which is distinguishing between making things kosher All year round. Know? And Passover, which I think is important for people to understand here. You are talking now about one little tiny bit of Mashu chametz. Yeah. Uh, year round, would it be the same? Uh, it wouldn't be as strict, but in but in any case, why? Why? Let us let us touch on that. Uh, because the Torah stipulates by chametz that even a mashu of chametz is forbidden. Even a, uh, anything. Yes. You cannot nullify chametz during Passover even by a thousand times over. That is correct. But the rest of the year, let's say you can, there is a process of mm -hmm. nullification. Yes, there are, there are, there are. 60 times over. Right. 60 times over usually will nullify uh, most substances. So in a case, let's say we, a drop of milk fell into a bowl of chicken soup, and there's 60 times the amount of that drop yes. of milk. Post, that, post facto, we can assume that, uh, that it's been it's been nullified and it's it's a non it's a non issue at that it's point. It's a non issue. Okay, that's important. 